Connect Church Easter Sunday in the house. How are we doing today? Come on, Jesus is alive, my friends. Man, it is awesome, something special about Easter Sunday, and we are packing everybody in here. We've got an extra front row here, the extra spiritual people up here. So, man, we're so glad to have you here. You guys are looking good and feeling good. You know, I, uh, you know, putting a suit on, I was, I have discovered a problem. I was like, I think, I think my, my closet is shrinking my clothes because it's a little tighter than last time. And so if there's any closet experts, please see me after service. We got to get that thing figured out. But uh, you're looking good, and we're so glad that you are here today, especially if you are a visitor. If you've never been here before, you had a lot of options in the area, but you chose Connect, and we're so thankful for that. And uh, we really would love to get to know you. There's a couple ways that we can do that, and that is, uh, first of all, in the seat back in front of you is a Connect card. You can simply fill that out drop that in the offering as it comes by or hand it to a host as you leave but actually the very best way would be is if after service you would take that or just go to the connect center which is out in the lobby under the big welcome sign can't miss it there's a friendly people there that love to get to know you answer any questions that you have hear your story kind of hear what all is all about with you and uh, just really get to know you we've got a special gift that we'd love to get in your hands just for going by the welcome center there so if you could do that that would be awesome we are eight years old we just turned eight years old and uh, since the very beginning we set out with one mission in mind and that is to reach our community with the love of jesus and to open our doors to everybody who's interested and wants to hear about jesus and so we've been doing that and we've got uh, some intentional ways that we do that first of all we believe that the bible is god's word we love people we believe in prayer. We believe in the next generation. We support the next generation. That's why so much of our uh, building is dedicated towards kids and youth. And so we just believe in those things. And we, so we hope you experience Connect today if you're new here and find out more about it and we can help you along the way. But we are so glad that you're here. Want to have the host come forward for our Easter Sunday morning tithe and offering. Your giving makes a difference. So many of you give sacrificially and on a regular basis, and it does make a difference. So far this year alone, we've already taken trips to Cuba and to Mexico. Not Cuba, Missouri, or Mexico, Missouri, by the way. The actual places. I just thought about that. Uh, that could be confusing. Uh, but we're about reaching people all around the world with the love of Jesus. And we've got more trips planned El Salvador another trip to Cuba later in the year. And uh, it's because we want to tell people about Jesus any way that we can. We've also got our summer camps coming up. It'll be summertime before you know it. And uh, we've got a kids camp. We've got a youth camp happening. And you're giving makes a difference in all of those things and reaching people and putting on the various ministries that we have and so we just want to say thank you you can give in the buckets as it passed you can give online you can give through venmo or paypal no matter how you give give with a cheerful heart it's worship unto the lord well today we're going to have an awesome service that is been about an hour long and we've got some great worship and some great uh songs and and preaching of the word today and we just invite you to uh join in with us when we worship today and we want to see what it looks like when everybody in here is praising the name of the Lord. It's going to be an awesome time. But a few quick announcements I want to share with you uh, about some upcoming things. First of all, this Friday, we have a Connect Girl City Takeover. All right. So this is for the ladies in the house. And uh, first time we've ever done this. This is not a service. We're not meeting here. Um, we are literally all throughout the city. And they've got a variety of options for you ladies. Different kinds of art classes, different types of, they've got a sourdough making class, which sounds delicious. And I might have to invite myself to that. Um, but all kinds of things, host homes, where ladies are just opening up their homes to hang out. You can get registered for all those. You can only go if you get registered, and space is limited on all of them. So you got to get signed up. you got to get registered. Great opportunity to bring a friend. Very relational, just hanging out and having fun. But we'd love if you could check that out. Then starting one week from today, we've got a new class 
called What is a Woman? And we are gonna be answering classes or answering that question. I know I've had that question my whole life. And uh, we're gonna take a look at the, what the Bible says about that and uh, learn more about that. We've got a phenomenal lineup of speakers who are going to be sharing each week. And so ladies, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. That's from sixth grade on up, but uh, if you even if you feel like sixth grade was a long time ago, this class is still for you, all right? So all ladies get registered, Space Limited. It is gonna be awesome. And then also starting next week is a brand new class called Alpha Class. And that is part of our new discipleship program. And we are really embedding this into the life of the church. And you're gonna be hearing more about it. This is eight weeks, but it's gonna be kind of an ongoing thing to where we're looking at all the various questions that you might have about what is the Bible and who is Jesus? Why did he have to die? What does it mean to pray? What's the Holy Spirit? All those things in a classroom style setting, round tables, answering that, watching things and learning and growing. And we would say, whether you've been a believer your whole life, or uh, you are new to the faith, this is for you. And so we'd love for you to join us. It's gonna be awesome. Well, today we celebrate Jesus, all that he did on the cross, the moment in history that changed everything for us. If you're a believer in Jesus, this is the day we celebrate because of what it means. It's so much more than bunnies and candy, although the Easter candy is my favorite, I will say that, okay, of all the holidays. But it's way more than that. And it's not just a cross, not just a decoration. It is literally the thing that changed everything for us. We're gonna celebrate that today. Pastor's got a great message, but it's Easter Sunday. He is alive. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus is alive. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God did not place him on a throne of the nations or to any sense of prestige. He came as a lowly servant, and the world hated him. Father, forgive them. But Jesus stepped down from the glory and splendor of heaven, that he might purchase our life as a ransom of his own. He didn't do it for the riches of the world, he did it for the love of humanity. Love so strong, love so deep, love that would make everything right again. For in the beginning, long ago, things were right in the world. Then in a moment of desire, sin came in and everything changed. The world that once beamed with light now was blanketed with darkness. Sin had come. Death was born. This ushered in a battle of light and darkness, good and evil, love and hate. Jesus came because of a love for you, love so passionate that the pit of hell could not overcome him. Jesus crucified on a cross, the suffering of excruciating torture, the pain of a brutal scourge, the grip of death that was broken, for the keys of hell were purchased with his life. Mm -hmm. Death was defeated once mm -hmm. and for all, mm -hmm. for the grave could not hold him down. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. This son of the Most High is the King of glory, the Savior of the world. He sits on the right hand of God. His name is Jesus, and he is alive. What did I claim its victory? The King of Love had given up his life. The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished 
but not the end we could have known. For the earth began to shake, and the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the heavens rose? that you've defeated darkness in the grave and that you are alive and we worship you in this place today. Thank you for the cross, Lord. 
Thank you for the price you paid for bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and you gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. We thank you for the nail pierced hands. You washed me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb. We're seated on the throne. Seated on the throne. Holy worship you, Jesus. And we
day that will be. Imagine this, the same Jesus we worship right now, but we don't see him. The same Jesus that you pray in your own room, but you don't see him. All of a sudden, you will see him standing in glory and in his power. Imagine the worship, the honor when you see Jesus who is alive. He is risen. Jesus is risen. And he is alive. Happy Easter, everybody. Find a few people around you. Tell them happy Easter. And you may be seated. Thank you so much. The choir, the worship team, thank you guys. You did an amazing job. What a great joy to have you all here. And those of you watching us online and those in um, additional seating, thank you so much for being a part of this celebration. My name is Peter, and I'm the lead pastor here at Connect Church. And you've chosen a good day to be with us. If you are visiting Connect, welcome. This is like Super Bowl of Christianity. You know, we know who won and we are celebrating. So the, today you pick the best day to be in church. But guess what? We don't stop. Next Sunday we start a brand new series called Jesus. Because this is not one and done. We continue to learn who Jesus is and why it's so good to follow Jesus. Are you happy to be here today? I am so glad. This is, uh, for me, service number four, right? And every time this worship, man, it moves me. Did it move you this morning to really celebrate what Jesus has done for us? It's an amazing thing when we start worshiping Jesus. We were created to worship. This is our most natural state when we worship our, our Jesus and our Savior. Before we get to our um, celebrations, you know, with your family, I know some of you celebrated yesterday, uh, but most of us will be celebrating today. Anybody excited for good food this afternoon? Yes, yeah. yeah, good food. We're going to be uh, hunting eggs, chasing rabbits, whatever else you will be doing. It's good that we start with the Word of God. Because this is the reason, the truth written in here, the reason we celebrate, the reason we know who God is, because there were many attempts in the past and even now to diminish, to minimize the power and the authority of the Word of God. But we believe because of the truth written in here. That's why we believe. And 75% of this book, those of you who are not really familiar with the Bible, that's okay not to know everything. 75% of the Old Testament, what is called Old Testament, that's the Moses Law, uh, Prophets, History, some poetry, and one theme all throughout 75% of the book, the Messiah is coming. The New Testament starts, it's about 25% of this book. It starts with the life of Jesus, four accounts of the life of Jesus, then life of the apostles, and then instruction for the believers, the followers of Jesus, the rest of it. And what's interesting that out of four gospels, one third of it is dedicated to the very last week of Jesus' life on earth. It's that important. Because if we knew all about his life, if we knew about Jesus, and we knew that he was a great person, he was a great teacher, he loved people, but we don't know how it ended, we would miss out altogether about Jesus, why Jesus came into this world. It's like when you start a movie on a plane, anybody started a movie on the plane, and because it was short flight, before you landed, just the, the good guys were down for now, but you knew ultimately they had to win at the end of the movie, right? But you don't know how plot will go. And you're like, you're about to watch how it ends and your plane landed. And the pilot says, we're here. And you think, oh man, I don't know how it ended. It's the same thing if we did not know that Jesus was killed, he was crucified, but he rose again. He is alive for a reason. The last week of Jesus is extremely important. When Jesus came to it, here's what he said, because he knew what he was about to encounter in his life. He said this, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Jesus said, I know what I'm about to endure, but this is the reason I am here. I'm gonna go for this and we know the last week of Jesus it started with worship that's what we heard last Sunday Palm Sunday how people worshiped and welcomed Jesus then it quickly became 
He was betrayed and ultimately he went to the cross. And today the topic is the cross. Are you surprised that on Easter we're talking about the cross? No, you're not. Did you see that beautiful cross out there in the lobby? That cross is very heavy. It took four big men and myself to carry it in. <laughs> and as we were carrying it, just the base of the cross, it scraped my wrist and I'm like, ow, it hurts. But Jesus was crucified on the cross and he endured the pain for us. We forget sometimes that it's not just a great picture. Jesus did die on the cross for your sins and for mine. And as we talk about the cross, we're so comfortable talking about this. Did you know that the tallest cross in the world is located near Madrid in Spain? It's almost 500 feet tall and you could see it from 20 miles away. I'm sure one day I'm going to see it because I love to travel and I haven't been there yet. But how cool would it be to see that such big cross? People wear crosses on their necks. And have you noticed sometimes the, the less godly person, the bigger the cross gets? <laughs> People are trying to impress, you know, who, look, look how cool I am. I love Jesus. People wear jewelry. We wear fashion on our clothing it's everywhere we love the cross we're so so good talking about this you know people put tattoos on their bodies of a cross and i don't have any tattoos but if i was ever to get a tattoo that would be the cross of jesus christ but i won't get it you won't see me getting a tattoo for many reasons number one tattoos kind of change in time right you may get your favorite kitten on somewhere on your body and in 20 years it looks like english bulldog it just changed. <laughs> Things change. But that's not the reason you won't see me getting a tattoo. It would be because of my mom. And those of you who know me, you'd say, but your mom is in heaven. That's right. For over five years now, my mom is in heaven. But that's where I'm going, and she's there. <laughs> and I know when I get there, she will see me, and she'll say, Jesus, give me just a minute with my son. And she would then lead me around the corner from a golden and a pearl street and we're gonna have a big talk. So I don't wanna do it with her. But it, cross wasn't a good thing to talk about during the time of Jesus. Did you know that it was so horrific? It's been said that it was most painful way to die. The Roman citizens did not crucify their own Roman citizens on the cross. That's how bad it was. Women were not crucified only for very few rare occasions. And even then they would be crucified facing the cross because even Roman soldiers, the harshest of all, they could not watch women's faces in agony and pain. Cross was not a good thing. People did not wear around their necks or put on their clothing. Cross was not a good thing. Jesus was crucified between two common criminals. And the way he looked when people were going to this Passover Sunday, Passover celebration to Jerusalem, they saw Jesus crucified on the side of the road. And in their mind, just another criminal was crucified. And in their mind, they're thinking, what did he do to deserve such punishment? We get word excruciating from the word cross. And when Jesus looked at him, he was disfigured, he was beaten. And here's what prophet Isaiah prophetically says about Jesus. When people would see him, here's what comes to mind. He was despised, Isaiah 53, 3, and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. As people saw him, scripture says that he was disfigured because he was, he was scorched before crucifixion. The, his, the way he looked was absolutely disgusting. It was dirty. He was bloody. And it was hard to look at him. That's why scripture says people turn away their faces. It was too much to endure. And Jesus did that on our behalf. That's why Easter is good for us because Jesus did that on our behalf. Was there another way? Why did Jesus end up on the cross? As people, we like to find an easy way to do things, don't we? It's been said that laziness is a big motivation for invention. When you see something's been invented, people were trying to find an easy way, but with God, there is no easy way. 
God doesn't use shortcuts because the scripture says, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. If there wasn't no sin, Jesus wouldn't have died. If people did not sin, Jesus wouldn't have to die. But when God says, when God decreed something, that all sin must be punished. And on the cross, we see the visual of what it cost to engage in sin. Are you with me? When people looked at the cross, it was a perfect picture what happens when you stay in sin, when you have to pay for your sins. That's the picture of sin. So on the cross, God punished Jesus for our sins. On the cross, God delivered his justice because God has not changed. God is holy. And what God says must be punished, he will do it because the guilty, they're looking for a corrupt judge. Are you with me? They want to find someone who would be lenient, who would overlook things. But the innocent, they're crying out for justice. They're saying, how come? How long? Have you ever experienced in your own life when you see injustice, brokenness in the world, and you just become indignant? You're like, how come justice isn't being delivered? And listen, we all been there, but on the cross, God's justice was carried out in Jesus. God has delivered his justice. It's just a matter of time when we see those who did not accept him being punished. But for now, God says, I have delivered my justice. I carry out my justice in Jesus Christ. Sin was punished in Christ. The next time you see evil, bad people doing something. You remember this. It was not just the sin of other people that sent people to the cross. It was your own sin. It's my sin that led people to the cross. When Apostle Peter, remember, he was one of them who did not get it. Because when you read the scripture, sometimes we forget that what we read we have to read chapter by chapter to realize the events of the last week. And it wasn't all pretty. Did you know that at the cross, apostles were confused when it came to the Garden of Gethsemane. They were scared. And Apostle Peter, when Jesus was raised from the dead, and in 50 days he, he, he left. And then 50 days after Jesus leaves, there is day of Pentecost, and all the apostles, they came together to celebrate, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes, and all the residents of Jerusalem, those who came to worship, they see the followers of Jesus are up to it again. They're there together. Something is happening. So Apostle Peter gets up before a crowd. Remember, the same crowd that crucified Jesus. The same crowd who yelled, crucify him. Get away with Jesus. Kill him. The same crowd. There now, the scripture says, their hearts were moved because of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit, the spirit of resurrection that is in this room today. It was moving on their hearts. And they're saying, what should we do? And here is how Peter addressed them. Listen. In book of Acts, chapter 2, 23 and 24, he says, This man, Jesus, was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and for knowledge. Imagine those people listening. So God knew about this? And he continues, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Aren't you glad that Jesus was not sinful and as he delivered the payment for our sins, death has no power over Jesus. So he raised from the dead by the power of God. But here's the thing. When the apostles were there, Peter and other apostles, and they see the soldiers coming to arrest Jesus, Judas betrayed him. You know what they were waiting? They were waiting. Jesus will just wield his magic power. He, they, they saw him resurrect people from the dead, heal the sick. They thought he's going to set him free and he will become king. But it didn't turn out like that. They see Jesus tied, beaten, being put down. He sped on, humiliated. You know what happened to all of them? They all ran away. Because that's not the outcome they were hoping for. Did you know that at the cross there was only one disciple? Do you know his name? 
His name is John. One disciple who remained at the cross. No wonder John dedicates half of his book of the, his gospel to talk about the events of the last week because he was there and you know what John says at the end of his book he says and I John who was there I testify that Jesus rose from the dead he says I saw him crucified I saw him come back to life and I am here to tell you that he is the Messiah and I by believing in him you will have life aren't you glad for eyewitness account of the resurrection of Jesus the same people who saw him crucified walked with him talked with him that's why they were laying their lives down saying I'm gonna tell this to other people they all ran away but here's the thing because Jesus did not commit sin he was raised back to life and here is the simple truth at the cross it was not you and I it was not even his apostles who helped him. No one can take credit for their own salvation. Jesus was there alone, paying for our sins. No one can, can tell Jesus, but I gave you a little water. I was praying for you. I was there supporting you, supporting your mother. They all ran away, but Jesus was pursuing them. You know why? Because he did not need help at the cross but he said now guys let me explain you something remember two of his disciples they're going to Emmaus and Jesus catches up with them and he says guys let me tell you something why are you so sad and he they say didn't you hear everybody knows Jesus just died and we thought and he starts talking to them scripture and scripture it wasn't to the moment when he broke bread and they saw the nail wounds in his hands and they realized this is Jesus and they believed in him by the way this Wednesday we're going to have a special first Wednesday with a special guest from the kingdom movement so make sure you're here we're going to keep talking about why it's so important to believe and to receive from Jesus you know what it tells me Jesus did not help, needed our help on the cross, but he needs our help to spread the gospel all around the world. That's why he regrouped his disciples. He encouraged them. He said, Peter, you betrayed me. I need you. Come back. I need you to take care of my people. And today, the Holy Spirit addressing every believer in this room to tell the story about Jesus' resurrection. That's our mission. We cannot lift our own sins but we can spread the good news of Jesus this is gospel when Jesus the son of God died for our sins and rose for our justification apostle Paul who comes after Peter the best known Jewish scholar at the time when he realized what happened he knew the scripture in Romans 4 25 he writes this he Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised for our justification so why the cross because Jesus died for our sins it wasn't human injustice that put Jesus on the cross it wasn't no one else Jesus was not a victim it was God's perfect plan of salvation so you and I can be saved by the perfect Lamb of God because it was God's promise the Passover lamb did not die for its own sin the Passover lamb was slaughtered so then his blood could be put on the doorposts of a house of every who believed in that, of every Jewish man and, and, and family. They will be protected. Jesus was crucified on the day of Passover, just like that lamb was offered for our sins. And in human justice system, you not get punished twice for the same crime, right? For the same crime. Even more so in God's justice system. And if Jesus has died for our sins, we can walk free. Not because of what we have done, but because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And as we look at the scripture, the way God looks at the world, there are only two groups of people who are in Christ and on their own. I want to be with a group in Christ. You know why? Because I don't know about you, I don't know how many of you are here are perfect. I'm not one of them. And if you are perfect, you should start your little club of the perfect people. <laughs> but I won't come to you. I want to be found in Christ, the perfect Lamb of God. 
I want to give a chance to what Jesus did for me that I, what I can do for myself. So if you are in this room and you have not realized that yet, that Christianity is not trying to be a good person. Following Jesus meaning being in Christ and accepting what he did for on our behalf. Here is how Apostle Paul puts it. He says, this is on our own. This is in Christ. In, first, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, 22, he says, once you, say it with me, you, that's every one of us, were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. That's us on our own. That's me and you. We're sinful. We think evil thoughts. We do evil things. But it continues. But now he, God has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Now, when God does something, it doesn't matter who accuses you and I. Your own mind, your neighbor, your, your parents, your, your culture, whoever accuses you, God says, no, we're good. I made peace with that person through Christ. That's why I want to be found in Christ. Because in Christ, God made peace with me if I believe in Jesus Christ. If we were talking about a, an illustration, it's like Noah. Remember Noah who built an ark? He built, he built the ark and God told Noah, build the ark because flood is coming. And you will save yourself and your family if you will be found inside the ark when the rain falls. And you know, Noah built this ark for hundred years some scholar says or even more imagine what faith it took there's no rain there's no storm and noah's building this big boat by the way there is uh, noah's ark experience in uh, kentucky i believe and i know some of you went there and people say it's really worth going there to see such wisdom and how it was built there's so much in that but imagine you're building this big boat on the dry land you can only do it by faith it takes faith to enter this boat before there is any rain or any water. So what happens when we believe what Jesus did for me, we have to do it here, not at the moment we die. Before you stand before God by faith, you receive what Jesus did for you on the cross. That's, by the way, a clear illustration of being baptized in water. If you are in this room and you have not been baptized and you call yourself a follower of Jesus, you're missing out this big thing. That as Jesus was put into tomb and he died, but he was, rose, uh, he was raised from the dead and he's alive, by faith we identify with Jesus in his death and his resurrection. And just like death has no power over Jesus, when you believe in him and you are baptized, you're telling the world, I am in Christ. And at this time when the whole world was destroyed by flood, Noah and his family, they were just eating dinner because they were in Christ. So it does not take your power or my power, it takes God's power. That's why we have to trust what Jesus did on our behalf and not on our own power. So today's one big question that I want to ask you this Easter, before you go on with anything or that you're going to do with your family, any of the fun stuff. And one question, and it's not about how are you, even though that's a good question. I'd want to know at some point, how are you, but not today. It's not, what do you feel about injustice done in the world? That's a big question we think about, but that's not for today. What do you think about global warming and other things that their people are talking about? That's not the question for today. Today, I'm going to ask every one of you a very personal and very um, meaningful question on behalf of the one who died for you. And this question is, are you in Christ? Are you in Christ? Have you trusted Jesus with your life, with your sins, or are you still trying to pay for them? Are you still trying to become a good person? Because for me, in my life, there are two groups of people. One group... It's all the people I love, and I love a lot of people. I don't think I have any enemies. And if you are in this room, you say, Pastor, you're lying. I don't know about you <laughs> because I don't have any enemies. If you feel something, you better tell me so we can make peace. And then there is another group. It's my family, my children. 
I don't even like them all the time. <laughs> but at 10.30 p.m., I sit there. We're sitting there with my wife, and I have this notification on my phone. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, charge at Taco Bell. Somebody's buying food. A little bit later, I know it's my son. Uh, next, a little bit later, ding, 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 ding. Oh, seven brews. That's my daughter. I already know. She's buying a drink that seven, costs $7.50 and plus tip. Why? Because she wants a drink. If it wasn't for my children, and I know they have my credit cards, I would be calling my credit company telling them, hey, fraud, fraud. Somebody's using my credit card, right? But it's my family. And I don't mind them using my credit card. They may not be perfect. By the way, parents, how many of you are guilty of ever telling your kids, why can't you be a little bit like so-and-so? Anybody guilty in this room? Our kids love it, don't they, when we do that? Here's the thing. They don't have to be perfect to be my children. They're just my children because they're born of me. And I love them. And I care for them. And I give them my credit card. And I pay for their insurance. And I give them house. And I give them food. And I don't mind. Because everything that belongs to me will be theirs. Same thing to be a child of God. God didn't invite us to follow him so he can like us enough not to send us to hell. God did not invite us to follow him so we can be just barely coming in. Listen, that's not what Jesus died for. Jesus died so you and I could be his children. And as such, we don't have to be perfect. Now, should we try? Of course. I want my children to respect and honor me. And all of us should respect and honor God. Jesus who died for us, but you don't have to be perfect to be his child. And as, as a child of God, all the blessings of the cross are yours because you belong to him. Listen to what John, who stood at the cross and saw Jesus died. Here's what he writes in first chapter of his gospel. He said, many have rejected him, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Can I say amen? amen? The best of us and the worst of us have only one way to become a child of God, and it's by faith in Christ Jesus and whatever he did on the cross. Because back at the Garden of Eden, God made this promise God made this promise. It wasn't like this thing, the, the, the fall of man just caught God off, uh, God, uh, God off, off guard. No, he knew he had a plan. And in third chapter of this book, the very beginning, here's what scripture writes. Here's what God is addressing the enemy. He says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He, not they, he, Jesus, will crush your head and you will strike his heel on the cross. Jesus was bruised. But let's, can, let's all agree that after the fight was over, I'd rather be the guy whose heel is bruised than the guy whose head is crushed. Jesus annihilated the enemy. Jesus took away the keys from him. Jesus is the one who's coming back. He's not coming back for another fight, but he's coming back to claim those that believe in his work on the cross. And if you are here today and you haven't accepted Jesus, just in a moment, I'm going to give you that opportunity to receive Jesus and say, Lord, I don't want to be trying. I don't want to take a risk. I'm going to rest myself in your presence, in your forgiveness. Jesus said that those who believe in him will have eternal life. So there must be inter eternal death. Eternal death is an eternal separation from God. And you and I don't have to be separated from God. In God's presence, we feel so good. We feel refreshed. The scripture says that we have breath and it's God's breath in our lungs. Life God has given us. And every time we breathe, we breathe His life. We cannot survive without God. And definitely, we don't want to be separated eternally from God. I want to wrap up this with illustration, my personal story. When... Um, as many of you probably guessed, if you're here for the first time, that I wasn't born in America and I have a little bit of an accent. Anybody can hear it? 
And so when we launched Connect, some people came and they're like, are you from down south where the swampy people live? Is that your wax and from? And I'm like, no, I love Cajun food. I got to give you that. I love Cajun food, like spicy, but I'm not from south. I actually was born and raised in Ukraine. And when I was 19 years old, we came to U.S. But here's how it happens. It's a long process to come to this country legally. And so we applied for the for. A political asylum because my dad was in prison for his faith and so President Reagan was then uh, um, in the office and opportunity presented and so my dad thought he had five sons we shall, should just leave the country for such instability and so we came to an American embassy in our own country and here is the big thing you come in inside American embassy on foreign soil and it looks like America there's American flag, people speak English, but everybody was smiling. We're like, why are they smiling? Is it somebody's birthday? Like, what happened? People were nice. And here's the thing, when you apply for asylum and you are granted asylum, the whole American system, constitution and the army are on your side, even though you're still on foreign soil. You are protected, you are safe in there. Of course, it's a process. Let me tell you, when I arrived here, I spoke no English because I was studying French at home. It took a while for me to learn this system and ultimately start serving others, bringing back. And I'm just a proud American citizen now. And let me tell you, there's a blessing to travel with an American passport. Don't believe what people tell you that people don't love Americans. People love Americans. They love American dollars everywhere in the world but it's a process so maybe you're here today and you think it i don't even know you say words atonement justification forgiveness like what does that even mean you don't need to know everything all you have to do you have to call on the name of jesus and ask for god's asylum say god i surrender i need your forgiveness i need your protection and the moment they told us your asylum is being granted the rights are on your side, just like any American citizen. It will be a process for you to own it, but you have a legal right when you call on the name of Jesus as a child of God and every blessing of the cross is yours immediately. But to grow, it's a process. That's why we offer classes, an opportunity, and may you come to services so you can grow in your faith. Because if you're going to trust this to get you to eternity, you got to know what you stand for. So then the accuser cannot bring you down every time. But you can say, but I believe what Jesus said about me. And I believe the word of God about myself more than any accusing voice. We're going to pray right now. Church, and I'm going to ask every one of you, I'm going to ask every one of you to pray for the benefit of those who would be accepting Jesus right now. So what does it mean to be in, the, in, in Christ? That means, Jesus, I repent of my sin and I am claiming your work on the cross as my own by faith. That's what it means. So right now, church, I'm asking you to pray out loud. And those of you who will be receiving Jesus Christ, do it by faith. Say it out loud. And if it's possible, no one should move right now. This is not the moment. This is the moment when we're going to celebrate what Jesus has done and receive him by faith. So just repeat this simple prayer after me. Father, I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending him on the cross for my sins. Thank you for loving me enough to give up your own son. So today, I repent of my sins. And I'm claiming the work of Jesus on the cross for my salvation. I believe that you died and rose again for my salvation. Jesus, save me. I'm calling you Lord and Savior of my life. Holy Spirit, fill me. I want to follow Jesus. I want to be a child of God because of what you have done. Thank you, Lord. Well, it was all eyes closed. I'm going to ask you to remain in that, in that posture for a moment. And I'm going to ask every one of you, if you have brought a friend, today is your day to tell them you need this. If you are here today and today is your day, 
Make this Easter 2024 to be a day when people ask you, when were you saved? You say, I was saved. Easter 2024, I claim the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If you are here today, would you raise your hand high on the count of three? One, two, three. Raise your hand high right now in this room, everywhere in this room. Thank you. Raise them high. Hold them. Tell Jesus that everyone in this room that I am following Jesus. Thank you so much for those hands. Will we all please stand? And I want every one of you in this room, we're gonna go back into worship. And I want you to realize something, that today, there are many people who raised their hands yesterday and today. Let's worship Jesus. Imagine the way, the day we see Him face to face. Let's practice right now, because He is here. The risen Savior is here. Christ is risen. Let's worship Him before we leave. face down and we worship we all cry out you are worthy God you are worthy God yes we crown you we fall face down and we worship we all cry out you are worthy dead he's alive and he's worthy to be praised that's what Easter is all about and we're so glad that you joined us today and for those of you that have said yes to Jesus today nothing excites us more than that that is why we exist is to bring people to Jesus to welcome people in to the family of God and it's a big deal it's a big decision and if you were gonna make any other big decision you would talk to somebody about it right you're going to get married, you talk to somebody. You're going to get a new job, you're going to buy a house, you would do that. Today, we want to talk to you about the big decision that you're making when you say, I want to follow Jesus. And so if that's you today, if you said yes to Jesus, maybe you didn't even raise your hand, but you felt in your heart that the Lord was drawing you to Him, we just want to talk to you about that today. Right after service, you can go to the Welcome Center out in the lobby. We've got this new box that says, All Things New because you are a new creation. And inside this is a whole bunch of resources just to help you along your way. Some simple steps, some tools, some things to help you. And so we wanna get this in your hand and talk with you about it. So if you would join us, that would be awesome. Also, a big next step is the start of the Alpha class. Next week, we're encouraging everybody, whether you said yes to Jesus today for the first time, or you've been saved and part of the family of God for a long time, this is for you. This is to help you grow in your walk with God. Nobody is at a point where they can say, I got it all figured it out. 
I got it all. I know everything. We all need to grow. And you're going to be hearing more about this just as we launch this whole class throughout the fabric of the church. As we say, this is part of who we are. We're going to use this tool to help us all grow closer and to know Jesus more. So it's an awesome day. Jesus is alive. He's risen, sits on the throne. Amen, amen, and amen. We love you. Happy Easter. Go in the grace of God.